Hello everybody and welcome to another Yellow Chair where today we're going to be talking about God's wisdom for sex in a sex-obsessed world. Well, if you've ever heard, why do I need a piece of paper to prove my love? Today I want to explore God's wisdom for why he says sex should be um, something reserved for the covenant of marriage. You see, the power of that legal document is that it's going to cost us something to walk away from the relationship. You've heard it said, put your money where your mouth is. Or Beyonce's song where she says, if you like it, put a ring on it. You see, what we know about human nature is that if we haven't made an investment, then things are easy to walk away from when the going gets tough. All of us can live without sex, but we can't live without intimacy. God's wisdom for waiting on sex is that um, sex is going to be really good when there's a really good emotional connection, and sex has a tendency to blind us from that emotional connection. Um, and so he, he wants us to wait and have self-control for a time when somebody has proven that um, they are so invested, they're willing to put a legal document on it. They're going to uh, where it's going to cost them something to walk away from. And that what that does is it creates a cradle of security for us to work out our weaknesses, um, to feel safe that when it gets hard, that other person is not just going to easily walk away with no cost involved. Um, and this is why studies have proven that couples that live together before marriage actually have a higher divorce rate than couples who do not live together before marriage because intrinsically what that couple is saying is let's just test this out and try it. I'm not really committed to you. I mean, the second it gets hard, I might want to walk away or the second that a better option comes, I'm going to walk away. Well, that doesn't create much security, does it? And eventually you want that security to feel like you're safe to be yourself with somebody that's going to challenge you, but with a high love quotient that they're not just going to walk away as you work out your weaknesses, just like you want them to be patient with you uh, to work out your own weaknesses. So this is God's wisdom for sex. And, and I want to speak a little bit also to the porn issue that we, we have. I hear so many people say, oh, porn is just fun and fantasy and has no harmful effects. Well, the truth is there's been over 500 studies done on pornography and its effects on people. And every single study shows that it has negative effects. It desensitizes us. It leads to a greater violence at, with men towards women who are objectifying women now uh, as just a tool to be used for their sexual satisfaction without considering their human needs um, and, and their desires. Uh, it leads to a lot of sexual dysfunction when it comes to um, wanting to just have a normal sexual connection with another real person because our brain has been so overwhelmed by dopamine and its effects through pornography that um, we need more and more violent images to uh, turn us on, just like a drug addict who uh, starts out with one drug, but then t chases that high and goes deeper and deeper into drugs. The same effect happens with pornography, which leads to all kinds of uh, horrible dysfunction um, that really hurts a lot of people, especially the person doing it. And so um, for all these reasons, God wants us to understand that he loves us. He wants what's best for us, that he can heal our hearts from all the bad decisions we've made in the past in this area. And that um, he really does know what's best and want what's best for us and for other people. And that therefore, sex is best save for the covenant of marriage where somebody has proven that they're willing to invest in you to such a point that it will cost them something to walk away from that relationship. And uh, I think that if we're honest with ourselves and we look at all the data out there, we will conclude that God is indeed know what is best, his ways are uh, the way for human flourishing. And so I hope this will encourage you today to seek his help, to seek accountability with others, to do things the right way, to have the best life that you can have and cause the least amount of pain. So 
All the best to you today. I hope this helps. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Yellow Chair. If this information was helpful to you, would you do us a favor and click the like button on our YouTube videos to help us in the algorithm and get this information out to others? Also, if you have a friend or an acquaintance that you think this could be helpful to, make sure you share it with them and hit the subscribe button as well and we'll drop a new video for you each week that will hopefully help you in all things pertaining to life and godliness because we want fullness of joy for you. Have a great day.